The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's this morning. Both, not both, with more than both, all that are in the building, all that are at home or will be connecting with us during the week, you're all very welcome. Of course, for those in the building, uh, we do have a change of plans for next week. You won't be in the building, just to let you know, okay? Uh, that's the best way we can put it, really. We will probably still be able to stream from, from church, um, but we can't have communal worship as such. Church will be open for private prayer still, but um, on, on Thursday, but that's as far as it goes. I mention that now. It is in the notices for later, and I won't forget it, I'm sure, but that, that's how it is for the moment. But we gather today on All Saints Day, and hopefully you'll be able to see we have different uh, flower arrangements up, Kept one prominently, that's certainly on the screen in here. Hopefully you can see it at home as well. If not, I'm sure Harriet will just span across just to see it briefly and then... Um, but uh, it's just to say that um, today being All Saints Day, it is, of course, a day when we traditionally will have a memorial service. And this Easter, which didn't happen in the sense that we normally would have it, the money that was collected for Easter lilies weren't, it wasn't used at the time, but we've used it for displays today. And so thanks to Jackie and her team for producing our beautiful displays today. And in terms of a memorial service, we do have a memorial service at 6.30 tonight. It's pre-recorded, so it'll be posted and scheduled ready um, for 6.30 if um, you want to spend time in reflecting on loved ones who have passed on. So it's a joy to join together, to celebrate and to worship as one church, both here in church, in the building, and at home in that wider church, which is out and about, uh, in pyjamas, in, um, in front rooms, in kitchens, wherever it may be. It's a joy that we gather together. Shall we begin our service by having our prayer of preparation? Hopefully all words will be on the screen and you'll be able to follow as we go through. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so we come to that time when we confess our sins. Let's spend a moment reflecting on where we are in our relationships with God, with neighbours, with ourselves. Let's spend that moment before we join in our collective confession. As we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, 
have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our collect for today. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship. In the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come in those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our readings this morning. And our first reading is from uh, 1 John chapter 3, reading verses 1 to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I'm going to welcome Anne to bring us the gospel and the the sermon. And something we haven't been doing recently, my failure there, is let's stand for the gospel reading. Today's Gospel reading is Matthew chapter 5, and we're reading verses 1 to 12. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please have a seat. Let us pray. Lord, please take my words and turn them into a message for each one of us here today. Amen. I was wondering, how saintly are you feeling today? On All Saints Day, we remember the saints from Christian history, those and, and also those who are still among us. And remember that we, as followers of Jesus, we are saints. 
if you look at some of Paul's letters, he writes to the saints in Ephesus and Corinth. Now, my problem with the word saint is it makes me immediately think of something or someone perfect in every single way. You may be familiar with the phrase, the halo effect. And that means that we extend a positive impression about one aspect of somebody and we apply it to everything about them. We make them perfect. There is, of course, an opposite to that, which is called the horns effect. And that is, for example, if a company, a well-known company, makes one flawed product, suddenly their entire reputation is destroyed. And I don't think we need to look very far. Maybe the tabloid newspapers would, uh, would give us an idea of how the horns effect works. But you see, there I have to declare my own bias because I'm afraid I apply the Holmes effect to tabloid newspapers. <laughs> People are complicated, aren't we? In his letters, Paul is very honest. He says, before I was an enthusiastic promoter of the gospel, I was a really enthusiastic persecutor of Christians. And we know from reading the stories about Jesus' followers, they had their ups and downs, didn't they? One minute, doing things right. The next minute, way off track. Because we're all human. And we all mess up. We all need God's forgiveness. And that's what being a saint is all about, in my view. It's recognizing that this is true and then keep on trying to get better, to trying to get forgiveness and move forward, rather than get bogged down in thinking, I'm just too terrible. I've just read um, a history of Christianity, a slightly tongue-in-cheek one, um, but the basics are hold true. And every Christian hero in there seems to have quite a pile of faults that, particularly viewed from the 21st century, we would think, how on earth can this person be considered a saint? And as humans, we really quite often like to have to categorise, don't we? We say, well, we want the positive, right, that person's okay because the positive outweighs the negative, and that person isn't because vice versa. Because actually, life is very, very complicated when we have to accept that everybody is a mixture. And of course, the important thing is it's not for us to judge. God's the one who's going to judge what's in our hearts and where our true loyalty lies. So, if a saint isn't perfect, what is a saint? I found this definition... It's written for children, which means I can understand it and it doesn't use big, complicated words. A saint is a person who is especially close to God. Seems straightforward. During his earthly life, Jesus shows us what that looks like, what someone especially close to God is like. Except, of course, he is perfect because he's got it right. And our gospel reading today is taken from what we know as the Sermon on the Mount, which in Matthew is Jesus' first big bit of teaching. And it happens as he's starting out in his ministry. So nobody's quite got the hang of who this Jesus chap is. They don't know what his life's going to be like. So he's starting to tell them. And the notes in one of my Bibles tell me that the word blessed indicates a state of well-being in relationship to God that belongs to those who respond to Jesus' ministry. A state of well-being. Seems a bit odd 
that Jesus then starts off the sermon talking about people who are poor in spirit. But then I read, I can't remember where I read this, possibly in the same Bible, that what that means is recognising we need to rely on God. Because relying on ourselves and relying on the material world and what that might be able to give us, that's just not going to bring us close to God. We move on to the next one. Now, the pandemic has forced many people to think more closely about what it means to mourn. And Sonia is going to explore this further in this evening's online memorial service. But even if we haven't been separated from loved ones by death, we have suffered many other losses over the last, I've lost count of how many months it is now, since March. And not one of those losses is trivial because it impacts on our sense of well-being and it can impact on our openness to God. And acknowledging loss is a very biblical thing. Go to the book of Psalms. It's got lots of examples of what they call laments, which is basically the, the psalmist berating God of all, because of all that's gone wrong. They're angry, they're upset. Pouring out our anger, our bitterness, our sadness on God is a way of drawing closer to him. And sometimes we feel those emotions not because of what's happened to us, but because of what we see around us. And we've had lots of those examples recently as well, haven't we? Children going hungry, families dying trying to keep safe. One country, um, one's country's, uh, I've lost, sorry, lost my track. One country's economy and environment dying, oh, sorry, no, they're not dying, destroyed to reach, to enrich another's. So basically, rich countries exploiting poor countries is what it usually comes down to. Do you think, don't you think that's how God feels when he looks at how we've messed up his creation? One bit messing up another. And saying that to God is starting to get to know God and share it with God. Meekness. We don't use that word much anymore, except possibly in a few hymns or Christmas carols. In fact, if we do use it, it's a bit of an insult, isn't it? Oh, she wouldn't say boo to a goose. Jesus lives his life in meekness by having a servant nature, letting his life be controlled by God. When he shows emotion, it's an appropriate emotion. He gets angry for a just cause. And that leads on, in my mind, to the next bit about hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And those words in the original language, that's not just, oh, I fancy a cup of tea and a biscuit. It's the hunger and thirst that Jesus must have felt after the time in the desert. That's how he wants us to feel about having the character of God, about helping to make the world run in the way that God wants it to run, undoing the damage that's happened to it. And that's really, really a big ask. And without that real burning hunger and thirst and being sustained with God, it just isn't going to happen. These are some of the things about being a saint. How about mercy? Being merciful. I see that as the opposite of judgmental. I could go back to ranting about tabloid newspapers. 
except they could then rant about me and be about being judgmental about them. See how difficult it is? We're called to see things from each other's point of view, to try and understand why different people react in different ways. Wouldn't it be wonderful if that was how we went about things, trying to get inside somebody else's actions and motives? It's a great but a very difficult calling to make kindness the way of the world. But if that sounds tricky, how about being pure in heart? How about looking at our deepest motives and being honest about them? And in one of the books I read, it says, you know, when you give to charity, when you give to the food bank, you do it because people need food. But is there a little bit of you that thinks, I feel good because I gave something to charity, to the food bank. The closer we get to God, the more we realise that God loves us not to make himself feel good, but for our sake. And the more altruistic we come, become, the closer we get to God. Peacemakers. They're great people to have around, aren't they? But this isn't Jesus just talking about stopping arguments. God's peace is much deeper than that. It's the presence of all good things. It's to unite people so that the potential for those arguments, those squabbles, goes away. Children of God, it said in the Apostle, we talked about that in the Epistle reading, didn't we? Children of God who inherit all that is God's. That's inheriting a kingdom of perfect peace. So that's quite a list of saintly characteristics, if you like. And it all comes at a price. Standing up for God and his values will bring opposition. When Jesus started the Sermon on the Mount... No one knew who he was or what would happen. He lived out each of these characteristics and he suffered for his loyalty to God's ways. Many Christians today, they have to choose between loyalty to God and their job, their family, even their earthly life. And in some ways, I think we should be worried, might be too strong a word, but we should be concerned if living for God doesn't bring some challenges into our life. God may not call us to show loyalty in a big, major way, but we must always keep checking that we are following God's ways and not the easier ways of the world. Following God's way is the way that brings his kingdom and leads to eternal life. This may all sound rather scary and overwhelming, but it's important to remember we aren't called to be saints on our own. One of the ways God is with us is through others. There's lots of us here today. There's lots of us watching online, listening. We're all in this together. We haven't said the Apostles' Creed recently, but you'll be familiar with that phrase, the communion of saints. This is what the communion of saints looks like. We're a family. We're a family that goes back over centuries. We've got people in it, like St. Peter, who made every single mistake in the book, but he didn't stop. He didn't stop trying to follow Jesus. 
We can learn from all those Christians in history. We can share experiences and lessons with each other, with other Christians today, comforting and strengthening each other. And we have the challenge and privilege to raise up Christians who will carry on God's work. We as saints need to keep moving forwards together until we all meet God face to face. Amen. Thank you, Anne, as ever, for challenging words. Of course, the curveball in that was the Apostles' Creed, because we've got the Nicene or the Shorter, but we don't have the Apostles, on, 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 unless you pre-rigged um, Pete for that. No, no, not to worry. Do we have the Nicene, the normal one? The, 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 shall we go for that one today? It's the longer one that we're used to saying. It's not actually, it doesn't ha actually have the communion of saints in it, but it's... It, it's closer to the, the, the bigger one. Um, and, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't quite catch that before. Let's say, as a response to all that, all that Anne has uh, preached for us, that um, yeah, our response is our belief and saying, uh, declaring our belief in God. So shall we say together the creed? It's the short one, that's fine. Sorry, I knew it was a, it was a long, long, long shot. You, you sure? Ah, got to flick through my book. No, no, thanks, Pete. Let's say together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And I'd now invite Angela to come and share uh, the intercessions with us this morning. Thank you, Angela. In the power of the Spirit and a union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, we give thanks for the saints of all ages, who in times of darkness kept the lamp of faith burning. Grant us grace to follow, surrounded by your love, so rich in blessings for us, your children, that we may rejoice in your promises and transforming grace, so we persevere along the race set before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for all you have made. 
and for your continuing work of creation and recreation. But the world feels strange right now. We turn to you in this time of trouble. Direct the course of this world in accordance with your holy will. Take away whatever hinders the nations and when we cannot see the way set before us, may we continue to put our trust in you. May you bless the peacemakers, the ones by their words and deeds may change the world. Let the power of your living spirit enter into those who hold authority, that they may be instruments of life and healing. We bring before you the troubles of peoples and nations, where there is conflict and war, poverty, hunger and disease, earthquakes and floods. We ask for your blessing on those who are hungry for justice, who struggle and live in violent and oppressive societies. Bless also the persecuted ones and keep them safe from those who would hurt them. Give us grace to hold to you when all is weariness and fear and look in compassion on this troubled and divided world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church in every part of the world. Give your church the love which knows no barrier of race or culture. Help us to bring light into all the darkness of life, hoping for a better world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember our nation before you. Bless those who are pure in heart, that you may use them to help us through the struggles we face. May we as a nation be strengthened and guided by those who go out as leaders before us. Bless those who plan for the good of all society and undertake the great burden of responsibility that is placed upon them. Give them wisdom as they make decisions which have far-reaching effects on the lives and health and welfare of all people. Lord, Bless the meek and all who serve society in willing generosity. We pray for all who work in voluntary organisations, all who serve the needs of others and all who devote themselves to caring for others. May they know the strength and encouragement of your example and companionship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church and for all who gather to worship both here and at home. Bless those who preach, teach and strengthen our community of worshippers and grant that our church may grow and increase in the knowledge of your divine love, guiding the way for its future through all the challenges, enabling us to witness the good news of your love by our words and actions. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, let us pray that you will give us rest from our troubled thoughts within our minds and on our hearts. In the quiet of your presence, be with us as we pray for our families and friends and all those in most need of our prayers. Help us to reach out in compassion to those who are sick, in pain, who are alone in trouble and distress. We remember also those who have asked the church to pray for them. Lord, bless those who are poor in spirit, who feel empty inside and dread the day, where COVID and other troubles place burdens on our lives. May we reach out to those who feel forgotten, discouraged and unhappy that they may feel remembered and loved. Pour into their lives the healing grace of your blessing. And in a few moments of silence, let us pray for those who are on our minds at this time. Be close to them. 
and grant them strength from all the troubles that only you may know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless those who mourn, whose hearts ache with loss for someone so much loved. Comfort and strengthen those as they grieve, surround them with your love, and give them hope for their future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, to trust in your word and obey your will. Help us to follow in the footsteps of your faithful shepherd Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of love. Let us rejoice and be glad, for our reward is in heaven. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Angela. So we come to share the peace in a more muted form than normal. Be strong through the grace that is yours in union with Christ Jesus. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace without getting up and standing, but you can turn and wave and do whatever feels appropriate. Peace be with you. Did my, oh, there we are. I think we're about ready to go. As we come to our Eucharistic prayer, um, those who have been with us before for communion, um, you'll receive the communion in one kind. Your wafers are presently covered and therefore safe from any aerosol expiration and everything else. Um, when we come to actually distributing communion, uh, we'll come down to you and distribute. We'll say a global, the body of Christ, and if we say a global, amen, um, just before I do that, then that again removes the sense of um, being too close together or talking between us. Um, and I'd ask that as I distribute, if you hold it in your hand and as I move on, and um, likewise, Anne, if you take your mask, receive once we've moved on. I think that's how it works. We do have gluten-free available, um, You'll just have to make, make some kind of gesture to allow me to know that you require gluten-free. But um, we come to our Eucharistic prayer.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went out among us. He opened, his wide, he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks for the glorious pledge of the hope of our calling, which you have given us in your saints, that following their example and strengthened by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as Jesus our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. For Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And having recalled the cost of this meal, we do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life.
to have received our communion and hopefully received your spiritual communion at home. So we give thanks. We say together our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So before we come to, you know what, I'll step out for this. Before we come to our conclusion, obviously we have notices. And let's start with the, the, the diary as such. Um, this evening, memorial service at 6.30, which is, as I say, pre-recorded. Um, uh, thanks to Sonia for crafting that and for delivering it, and I pray that it will be a great blessing to those that will um, view it and partake of that service this evening. That will come online at 6.30 through the Facebook uh, feed. Um, straight after the service today, uh, there will be a pop-up poppy um, stall in the Lich Gate again. Uh, thanks to Pat for running that and for being able to raise funds for the poppy appeal when in this year of four years, there are very few avenues for being able to collect. That said, of course, next week is Remembrance Sunday, and to be honest, we're not quite sure what's happening now. Um, there will be, uh, our service is going to start at 10.30 online, um, simply so that we can observe an 11 o'clock um, remembrance in the, during the actual service. There will be a private wreath laying or there is planned a private wreath laying at the War Memorial, but that may not happen now. It'll be a case of watch this space almost. But in any event, we wouldn't encourage anyone to come to that. And if you are wanting to partake fully in the remembrance, your best option is actually the television with the cenotaph and everything else happening there. Now, with the church closing for communal worship for the, certainly for the next month, um, we are still allowed to be open for private prayer. So the church will be open um, on Thursdays between 10 and 2. Uh, we won't be able to do our communion on the third, third Thursday because that's communal worship, but we are able to open for private prayer. So it would be lovely to see any of you who feel able or um, able to come into church for private prayer on Thursday between 10 and 2. Our coffee morning will, will begin as soon as we're finished here and hopefully a few minutes after that, family time will be online as well. As ever, our thanks go to so many people who enable us to, over these last few months, to have been able to meet in person in church, to, to join together and to, of course, to reach everyone online as well. Um, so many people to thank from the office to the uh, stewards in the building to AV and everything else, our, our huge thanks. Um, and, of course, we will be continuing to live stream services during this uh, secondary lockdown. And it may be that we are, or uh, the initial indication is that we can stream from here for our services. So if you are viewing at home, don't think that you're missing out or, or that if you normally, you know what I mean. It will only be the people at the front and Peter and Harris at the back and that'll be it, okay? It'll be very weird, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, if you want to keep in touch, obviously the website that's got phone numbers on for our pastoral team, um, as well as the office, um, Arlene and Jackie are there and answering calls and dealing with queries and everything, obviously from home. Um, so if it's an immediate query about stuff in the office, they won't necessarily be able to get that information to you straight away, but um, they, they can do pretty much most things. Uh, if the bullseye, November bullseye is online and uh, available for reading. Just a, a, uh, a mention about the, the December edition of Bullseye, even more relevant now. Normally, as you will remember those who have been coming to the church for years, there are piles and piles, all very neatly alphabetically ordered, but piles and piles of cards in the assembly area for you to rifle through and collect each week. Obviously, we're not doing that this year, and we can't, by the looks of it, regardless. Um, so, um, Sorry, going back to the quote now. However, if you would like to send greetings to your friends, why not do it through Bullseye? 
Just make a donation to a charity of your choice and send your short message to the editor by 15th of November, and greetings will be printed in the December edition of the magazine. So a perfect opportunity, something that I know a lot of people say each year, oh, I'm going to do a general greeting and give to charity, and maybe don't quite get around to doing it. This year, we've got no excuse. And of course, uh, as we're hearing, the saintly act of giving, whether that be to the charity of St. Andrew's Church or a charity of your choice, please do um, you know, choose wisely and, and give as much as you can. We all need our charity at this time. Morning prayer will continue to be streamed Monday to Thursday. Um, sorry, I, I should have gone straight to the offering bit, but this is in the, the order I've got it. Um, that obviously should have come earlier on. Because we were talking about money off giving, we are grateful for all that you have continued to give um, online, in person, however we've received. And uh, we do encourage you to continue to give while our costs as the church, as the national church, continue to um, through this time. And th there are various ways of giving. If you are saving it up and paying by check, um, Horn Church PCC is who it's payable to. Um, but you can sign up to the parish giving scheme or use the Just Giving button on the website. But let's give thanks for all that we have received in this time. Lord, you provide all things, and we thank you for that. And we return our offering that it may, may be used for your greater glory and the good of all people. Amen. Of course, as we're nearing um, Christmas uh, and we're talking of charity, don't forget to be supporting food banks and all, all those different avenues which, we, we, um, which need so much help at this time. And uh, yes, just be thinking along those lines as we hurtle towards Christmas. Now, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? No one that's admitting it in here. Okay, right, let me just, uh, yep, I was just checking that I can still announce this one. In the midst of all the, um, uh, all the relative darkness that, um, and the news yesterday, again, kind of dragging us down and thinking, oh, come on, we have the light of Christ, we have good news amidst, in our midst as well. So it's a pleasure to announce um, that, just wondering if there's an actual quote, yes. A message from Charlotte Clay. Charlotte normally sits with Terry over here, teaches Sunday school. She and Ryan are expecting their first child due early May next year. And uh, she says, I know a lot of our church family don't have access to the internet, so I feel word of mouth is the best way to spread our lovely news. So it's a joy to hear that, and um, congratulations to you, Charlotte and Ryan, and all three of you, and you get a round of applause. So marvellous, stay well and stay safe is the message there, I think. And once more, let's continue to be saints, as Anne was encouraging us to be. Let's be the neighbours we need to be to those who need help. Um, let's be kind to ourselves, but let's be looking to how we can help others as we go through this next month together. And we will continue to be the gathered church. We will continue to be um, celebrating and worshipping together, uh, whether it be, well, it will entirely be at home, but we continue to be the church. And I'm very grateful to the choir for um, the, the addition, the, the musical worship that they brought to us today as well. So, thank you. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 34. And it's using a few verses from that. Very much a psalm of praise, the, the, the verses that we've got here. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We have done that today, and it's good to do it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good. 
Let's seek our comfort. Let's seek after the Lord this week. And let's receive God's blessing. Be of good courage. Stand firm in the faith. Do everything in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. A reminder to wait for the stewards to say it's time to go. So do stay seated. It will be drifting from this side first, so you can relax for a moment. But do please wait for the stewards. But let us go into this week in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.